I studied at the University of Georgia, majored in finance, minored in stocks and bonds type scenario. But I graduated in 1974. And the market was in terrible shape there, so I didn't go into it. Worked for corporate America, mainly banking. Uh, ran the Southeast region for 14 years. In the lull between the bank and what I did, we were talking and the wife said to me, she goes, look, everybody comes to you for what stock to buy, what do you like? She says, look, people are asking you for your help. Why don't you see if you can do something along those fields? So we formed a company. Uh, there were three of us. That lasted two years. The partner that ran the admin side, accounting side, and myself split out on our own in, I think it was 94, and we formed Capital Investment Advisors. And in those early days, we used to do radio shows every so often with a radio personality by the name of Mike Cavanaugh. Mike Cavanaugh, who's had the show at that point for seven years, it was the number one rated financial show in the city of Atlanta, said to me, Mike, is my offer still good? And I said, what offer is that? He said, the offer you made me a couple years ago. He said, if I wanted to go into the business and hang a shingle somewhere, I could do it with you. So, of course, knowing the number one talk radio show host, financial radio show host in the Southeast, wanting to come join, most people would have immediately said, absolutely. I looked at him and said, uh, no. Uh, he went white. He says, I said, but I will tell you what I will do. I will let you come work in my office for a week. After that week, if you still want to, you can. So that's what we did. And he came and the first day he, uh, the first day he turned around at the end of the day and said, I don't need to go another four days, I'm ready. In college, I interned for UBS Financial Services. That's what I knew that I wanted to do. However, I always knew in the back of my mind that maybe coming back and working here was gonna be an option for me. Um, I didn't quite know what this business was and exactly the pace at which it worked, but I knew that I wouldn't be happy in a sleepy financial planning atmosphere. That's just not my personality. So I didn't quite know this was the business I would exactly fall into, but I did know that the industry is where I wanted to be. And then this was the right place at the right time for me. I didn't know anything else, to be honest. Yeah, I knew I was gonna be in this industry and I knew I was gonna, I didn't know if I was gonna come straight back here after college or if I was gonna go do something else, but I didn't wanna just go into the business and just do, I wanted to try to do something different. Um, and that's what led me to doing my CFA early on is I thought I'd be running a fund. But with when we started uh, the company Wella, which is a sister company of ours, I uh, saw that as an opportunity and then I came back here uh, and worked here. Basically, I've told them from day one that they did not have to choose this business. They do whatever they want. If they chose here, there would always be a desk and a phone available to them. I remember that and the fact that he called me and that we were hiring and running a business here and that was a that was it, right? That was my kind of confirmation that, wow, I can go be a part of making those decisions and building that business. So I think that was the, the moment when I said, yeah, that, that, that's where I want to go. Early 2008, when Mitchell called me and we were talking, or he was talking about starting uh, Wella Strategies at that time, I saw that as an opportunity, an interesting opportunity to come back and kind of grow something, build on what dad's already built, but then Mitchell and I could grow something uh, together as well. And so that was kind of the, those two points kind of led to this. I started in the investment business right out of University of North Carolina in the 1990s and pretty early on in my career uh, I, I worked with a gentleman who was good friends with the Reiner family so uh, I knew about the, the CIA as a company in, in the very really in the very beginning stages of CIA. Dad had this passion of growing the business with people that uh, were good people and that we knew a lot about and so we didn't have to go through this whole kind of recruiting process that we kind of we do now. Um, and it was really cool to see how these kind of families that already knew each other were growing and then dad's, uh, the, the business that they were all doing was helping them all live a better life, which is pretty remarkable. What has helped capital become what it is today 
and the family feel can be related to our second longest tenured employee. And from them, we have hired their family, friends, associates, people they've known. And from that, it has compounded to trying to hire people that there's some connectivity. And that's really what, what happened with the whole family. Uh, it, it really not just Mike Reiner working with, but Mitch Reiner plays a, a critical role. Matt pay, plays a very critical role as well. So to be able to really work with them as a family in different capacities has been uh, pretty phenomenal over the last uh, several years, or really over the last decade or so. The most challenging time of this company, of course, day one, but once you pass day one, you got day two, and then when you think you've turned the corner, you lost one of your main associates, and you're faced with not knowing what tomorrow's gonna to do. The most challenging time here at CIA was probably in the midst of the financial crisis, uh, at the real height of it, December of 2008. Um, I'll never forget that night. The next morning was Sunday, and he was supposed to take control of his radio show that he had done for 17 years leading up to that day, um, and he had passed away that night. Losing Mike Cavanaugh was, was a very difficult period of time emotionally for uh, the firm and going through a great recession. So all that kind of came at the same time, and it was our job here at CIA to really get our clients through that period of time as well and comfort our clients and help them understand how we would be able to get through this, which ultimately we did. After losing Mike, uh, my partner then and myself met with Cox and WSB about how to keep the radio show. I personally did, didn't know Mike Cavanaugh, but like so many families in Atlanta, I listen to Mike Cavanaugh regularly. And when I started in financial radio on, on another channel, another station, I took notes listening to Mike Cavanaugh shows. Uh, in, when I was able to start Money Matters, which is a great honor to be able to do, uh, I had really learned so much from Mike that it helped me kind of hit the ground running. As the years have gone on and I've gotten to know Wes very well, he's a true family man. And I think that transcends to us uh, as a whole firm and uh, I think it's seamless. One of my favorite things about CIA is our culture and our, our kind of our, our family environment. In the early days of CIA, there were only a few young kids. I had just had one child, today I have four. Uh, so as we've grown, so of our families, when I first got here, I think there were three small kids. Today there's two dozen children. We could start a daycare center at CIA. So this is a very family-oriented firm. We're, we're a big group of families, helping families, and it makes really for a wonderful place and a wonderful culture to, to work with. We have a picture that's right behind me um, of all of us uh, celebrating and as one team and one family at, at my wedding. Um, that is a definition of what this place is. The fact that dad was able to take his personality and in the way that we run our business, the way that we interact with our clients, the way that we work together as a team, those are the values that don't go away. So what I'm proud of is that he didn't run this business, he didn't build this business for profits, for bottom line, because this was about doing what's right, serving people. And those values, that, that, that's, that's, that's a legacy. I think I'm proud of, of the impact that he's had on so many people, and I think that, um, if you truly look at it, I think that people that work in the family of companies that he helped start, um, they have a better life than I think they maybe ever dreamt that they would. And I, I know I do, and I ever dreamt that I would. And you know, I think that I'm proud of the business he's built and the lives that he's impacted um, from both internally and externally. Um, with the clients. So Mike Reiner has really been a phenomenal leader for us as a company. And I think like any, any good leader, you're able to set up those who are around you to kind of continue on uh, and thrive and maybe take even another step forward. And that's what Mike has allowed us to do. And, and a lot of that has to do with the transition of having Mitch uh, have a really integral role in, in CIA. Okay, Mitchell's influence, his energy, his foresight, his ability to see what is needed in the future and his drive to go after it and get it is 
exceeding um, anybody's expectations, um, mine especially on what this firm can do, and it's totally because of his efforts. I've worked uh, side by side with Mitch, at, now that Mitch and I are partners, uh, to really make a lot of these uh, decisions that impact us over the next five and ten years. Uh, we, we kind of joke here that uh, Mike Reiner sees out over the next year, I see out over the next three years, Mitchell sees out over the next decade, which is a really nice combination for, for the three of us. And, and we think that the way we have positioned things today, we're more excited, excited than ever as CIA passes, let's call it the 20-year the mark, uh, for the next 20 years uh, of the business. And it's, and it's been so much fun to work together to, to really build that and take CIA to kind of the next step uh, and into the future. The reason I'm so empowered every single day to work with this team and to continue building what we are building, and I, I, really, I, I really encapsulate it into because we can and because we should that we can create more moments because of the team that we have here. And we can create more moments because we actually have a strategy and an investment philosophy that people need. And why else should we fulfill this vision of creating more moments? It's because we should. Not because we want to create this giant business, but because there are folks across this country who need what we do and who would say thank you like the rest of our clients do for the work that we do for them. So I believe that we are growing this business, we are creating more moments because we can and we should. We're on a mission at CIA to create more happy retirees. That's what we want to do. And the more, the more families we can help over the next 20 years and the next 30 years, I mean, that's what we're here and we come to work and we come into the office every day to do. That motivates us here at CIA, and that really is part of our history. It's part of what we've always done, and it's part of what we're really proud of, and it's exactly what we want to continue to do into the future.